Welcome to Meet and Match Digital Show of Linea Pelle Fair. Hello, Maria Teresa Laudare. Hello, Orieta Felizzari. Uh, <laughs> thank you for having me again. Such a pleasure to see you. It's a pleasure for me and for us to have you again and to talk with you about your experience and about your journey in fashion. Thank you. Tell me more about what's happened lately in fashion for your site. Well, lately we have been researching a lot on materials, sustainability, and of course, on this new atmosphere that we are living in this new present of ours. So are you talking about uh, Brazil in specific? Because I guess that you are in, uh, in Brazil. I don't know where exactly. So tell me more detail about this. Well, I, I am in Brazil. I am in Brasilia at the capital of Brazil. Of course, still in touch with people in Minas Gerais and Sao Paulo and Rio where things, um, products, are made and I, I keep on working with research and with consultancy in fashion and research linking fashion history and trends. I think materials are a fundamental part of your research, correct? Yes, you're right. Materials are, are fundamental Otherwise, we wouldn't have a product. And what do you think designers in Brazil are more uh, focused to find new solution, new proposal in materials? I think we are looking for materials that give us, above all, a sense of um, of going back to the roots but in a sensorial way that is textures do you imagine something more tactile or do you imagine something which is the image and the the quality or the aesthetic aspect i imagine something more tactile of course with a lot of quality because longevity now is really important so as you you once said uh more quality less quantity and do you think that consumers change it some needs and some attitudes that also influence that the selection of the material lately? I guess so, for two reasons. One, we have this new generation of consumers who, of course, they are on reviews all the time. They want to know where things come from. And on the other side, our older generations, since they have been more at home, as I told you, they want to feel that kind of a cocoonish feeling of comfort and softness when they are at home and then when they are out in streets we feel like we have seen in many fashion shows we feel the need of protection la carapace uh, as they say it in french i think in italian is also the same thing so it's a lot of protection i think the need of protection in quality so that you know it will last in touch so that you feel uh, it's comfortable. I think that's it. Since you are, uh, you are based in Brazil, but of course your, your head is all around the, the world, which elements do you recognize in the Brazilian consumer when they perceive the tactile aspect of a material for bags, for shoes, for apparel? I see that they really like uh, natural materials in the mean of natural leather, 
uh, there is not such a thing. Although there are people who who praise for veganism and who praise for um, technological, pure artificial 3D things, there it's not like the major consumer. The major consumer usually, when I'm I'm talking about, of course about um, luxury standards, when we talk about Italian leather. Uh, they really want quality, so they want the natural material and finishing uh, touches like padding. And so, for instance, they mention some brands and then you know what material they are talking about. You know what I mean? Like luxury products made in Italy, even if the world is not aware, good products are made in in Italy, even if they mention a label, we, you know, since we work with research, we know, oh, that's Italian. That's great. And do you think that contemporary or young consumer in Brazil could be interested to know more about the story making of a material? Yes, because they are so much on reviews. There are so much on tracing. So mm -hmm. I guess they would like to, it, it, they, they feel assured, I, I, they need this. What am I really buying? Oh, this is interesting because this means that having a different way to select the product and judge the product, if you know more about the story making, Exactly, exactly. You're absolutely sure, exactly. And uh, what about sustainability in terms of heritage or in terms of uh, protecting and respecting the people that make things? We are having that. And I would say we are also having a lot of praise for for regions and their products and artisanship like if you talk about amazonia then they are really praising the products and looking up on communities that either they produce it or either that the product will uh in in its selling help that region somehow you know what i mean like when the yeah. profit of the product will help developing a community um, a social situation. So I people understand. Are it. They, all, I they understand. are also considering like there is a brand here that uh, ever, ever since the beginning of this uh, subject, sustainability, uh, they decided if we do a little, we have done something so it's not like huge big steps but small steps i understand what you mean and this kind of support in the community the local community it's also part of the process to keep and maintain an heritage way to make it the artisanal uh, aspect and even the people and culture around these types of material yes yeah, like the campana brothers like they go and they analyze how can i like a basket weaver how can i get this basket weaver culture and insert in my product so that my product communicates a certain culture well I have another question for you. If you need to choose, if you have to choose some material for your best outfit, which colors you will pick that could suit the Brazilian vibe at the moment? Black is sold a lot, but I've been hearing a lot of coral wishes let's say a lot of people are saying oh i like black i wear black but i love 
coral. Hmm. It's funny. But, and then people ask me, oh, what do you think about coral? Or do you think coral would sell? And there is also this about this color nowadays. Ah, oh, this is like a coral uh, vibe, which is in the world of reds, in the world exactly. of oranges. Could be also a way to express optimism. Exactly, I do agree with you. Because we are looking for better days. And I think that is why, again, we are um, in this uh, building up our environment. And I see a lot, Orieta, I forgot to tell you. I see a lot of need of leather in the furniture. Again, for that idea of long lasting. I see. We also interview a few architects, thanks to you, uh, from Brazil, and that was a great request of leather, maybe more than before, because exactly. it's, the mo it's the most long lasting material when we think about something that has to remain for the life and has to become the best vintage. And when you think about in the past, when this came, like in the 20s, all those uh, furnitures that were created by then and survived a war. So we have that heritage in our minds of all those great designers who did furniture with leather, you know, Le Corbusier and all those, uh, Miss Van der Hoe, and we have those still nowadays considered classics that you should have in your house if you want a contemporary kind of feeling but classic so in our minds these are futuristic expressions of a time that survived a war so i think this is very important wonderful maria teresa i like it what what you said because you suggested to choose and pick the highest premium level of materials which is suitable to make some pieces that will become the future classic yes i think we are leaving this time as product makers when we talk about research and materials i think we have in our hands the time to make history in the future like once they had. And I will. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arietta, for this opportunity once more. And I do hope to see you soon in Italy, in oh, wherever around the world they will allow us to. <laughs>